Hey guys, how's everyone doing? You're not gonna believe the opportunity that I have been given. I am here at MDR Training in Colville, Leicester, because I've been given an exciting opportunity to work with MDR Training. Okay, so I'm here at MDR Training with Rich and with Tom, and I've been given an opportunity to attend MDR's training course for the Transport Manager CPC, and the guys are giving it to me free of charge, which is amazing, in return that I review their course on YouTube. So what I'm going to do is, for you guys, I'm going to vlog the entire course and my experiences, the good and the bad, and see what's in store for me and whether it's a good thing for you guys to get involved with. So first of all, Rich, do you want to introduce yourself? My name's Rich. I've worked for MDR Training for 21 years. Um, came, came to work on the recruitment agency in 2011. We set up the training department um, initially to do driver CPC to our drivers and it's kind of moved on from there. Um, first transport manager course had three people on. Um, which was terrifying for all of us because we weren't overly sure what we were doing. Um, back in December or March this year, we had 110 people sat the exam with us and it's kind of gone from strength to strength. So, Brilliant. There you go. So MDR training, did you say that you were training up your own drivers? Yes, so when, when we started, the, the, the original company was Midlands Driver Recruitment, so hence the MDR. So when the driver CPC reared its head, uh, like I say 2008, we decided to get approved so we could deliver the course to, to our drivers, more saleable, more, more qualified. Um, and then a couple of the companies that we were working for said, can you do it for us? And it just kind of exploded from there, really. It's gone from there. Yeah. Strength to strength. Hi. Okay then, Tom, you're one of the tutors, aren't you? Can you just tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I've got a long background in transport. I've been in the industry about 15 years. When I left school, I joined the Navy, so I have a history in engineering on that side of things. Um, I've been working with MDR training as an instructor for the past year. Sort of a happy accident, really. I came on one of the courses here, and we hit it off. Um, and they offered me a position of instructor, so I've been teaching the Transport Manager CPC and Driver CPC with them since then. I'm not new to training. I've been doing a bit of that in the past, along with you know, driver, assessor, driver instructor, all those sorts of roles that tend to move on from driver. So I've done most of the roles in the industry and I also work as a transport manager. So I think I'm reasonably well placed to be, be teaching the course. So looking forward to having you on the course. Thank you. So you say you've done instructing and things as well? Yes, yeah. Which um, one was your favourite job out of all of those? <laughs> this one. <laughs> I, really, <laughs> I really enjoy teaching, um, yeah. but I found the instructing of drivers to be challenging because I wasn't instructing new new past drivers, I was instructing qualified drivers yeah. in driving techniques and fuel efficient driving and things like that. So it, if you know drivers, it comes with its challenges and I really enjoy the detail of the Transport Manager CPC and trying to get people to, to understand all the sort of nitty gritty, I really enjoy that. So this is this is the best by far. but. I've enjoyed everything over the years, but for the time it's been good experience. Good experience, yeah, absolutely. That's interesting because I've actually discussed my interest in being a HGV instructor oh, really? okay. um, in the past. So everyone that watches my videos knows that. So it's interesting to hear your point of view with that. So anyway. <laughs> Can you explain, first of all, as an introduction, this course is the Transport Manager CPC course. Can you just explain what a Transport Manager is and who needs this CPC? Yeah, yeah. So every company that runs heavy goods vehicles over a certain weight needs to have an operator licence, we call the operator licence. And we cover this in great detail in the course, what an operator licence is. But one of the requirements for an operator licence is to have a qualified Transport Manager. Now a lot of people don't know what a Transport Manager is, it's an individual with this qualification who knows the requirements of, of running a compliant fleet. And so you have to gain this qualification before you can be nominated transport manager on an operator's licence. So it's very niche, but it's a really, really important role. Um, 
you can't operate early goods vehicles without it. So, so for example, if Rich wanted to start up his own haulage business, he's won the lottery, he's bought a fleet of trucks, yeah. he's ready to go, he's got some drivers who are willing, mm -hmm. he needs an operator license, yeah. and from what I understand, you need a person of competence to run that side of the transport for you. So that's where this qualification comes in. This qualification gives you that title to run the business mm -hmm. for Rich, for example. So if I got this qualification, I could run the mm -hmm. transport side of your business. Yes. You'd be surprised how many people find this out after they put their application in as well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so technically, you could be, you could do the CPC and yep. you could be an owner operator, yep. technically. Yep. Yep. So you could run, you could be the person who is competent in mm -hmm. charge of like the maintenance and things. Provided you, you, provided you can show you can dedicate enough time to it. Yeah. That's because you've well. got to be careful of, you, you've got to be able to give enough time to being a transport manager as well as you know, as well as doing the role as well, so y arguably yes. Just quickly then, what are the duties of a transport manager? Right, so there is a lot, a lot more than people appreciate, it's not sort of just turning up doing a few TACO downloads, but um, the key items are you have to manage the drivers, you have to manage the vehicles and you have to manage the operations. So all the roles fit under those three headings. When we're talking about drivers, it's things like managing driver licenses, managing the driver's hours rules and, and tackle off downloads and make sure you're training the drivers. And then vehicles is all the maintenance requirements, which is very, very involved. A lot, again, a lot more than people appreciate. And then the day-to-day -day operations, making sure the drivers are doing their war crime checks and, and things like that. There's a lot more to it and every company is, is diff different as well, which makes it a fascinating role. But the broad outlines of that is you have to have continuous and effective control of that operation as the transport manager. So you're making sure that the law is being complied with yes. so from a term of maintenance, driver's hours, it's your responsibility as the transport manager to make sure that all of those rules are being followed. Yes, the compliance is the magic word. So you're trying to get people to do what they need to do under the regulations and in many, many respects that may not always be their first priority so that it's always a challenging role for a transport manager to, to get done what they need to get done. So technically then, if I was one of your drivers and I turned a bit rogue yep. and you were my transport manager and I wasn't securing my load and I was going over my hours and I was causing a lot of problems, you're responsible for that technically. Yes, and I would be answerable to the Traffic Commission for that. So whatever I do or don't do reflects directly on me, my reputation and my company's operating licence. So, so that's a lot of responsibility. It's a huge amount of responsibility. Especially when you're managing. Yeah. 20 drivers or something like that. And a lot of people only realise that when they're halfway through the course as well. Yeah. So they go, hang on a minute, I've got a lot to do, you know? We so technically, if it, was, if it was Rich's haulage business, mm -hmm. yes. and you were the transport manager, and these mm -hmm. drivers were getting away with all sorts, and the vehicles were not being maintained properly, and the law was being broken, you're going to get in trouble and you as the I'm company gonna are going to well. get your operator license taken away so mm -hmm. you can't run your business. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So directors are responsible directly to the traffic commission because they own it to the company or whatever that situation might be and so is the transport manager and one or either of them can be taken out of the industry essentially. Prison? Stop, stop, um, prison potentially if it gets serious enough, yeah. Wow. Uh, the consequences are really severe and as, as Rich mentioned we do have people who arrive on this course not knowing what they're getting in for and yeah. then halfway through they decide Actually, I'm not sure this is for me, so thank you very much, but I'm going to step away from it now because yeah. I don't want this. That is a lot of responsibility, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But very rewarding at the same time. It's, Absolutely, it's yeah. a unique role in that way because very few people understand what is a transport manager, but um, once they get into it and they see, it's like, wow, that's something to be really proud of and you do it well, yeah. but it comes with huge, huge challenges. So we'll, we'll cover all this on the course when we go into it. I think a lot of people see transport manager as the person who is the planner. Mm, um, yes. So although you've said the transport manager is responsible for the day-to-day -day runnings of the business, such as um, driver's hours and maintenance, you're not expected to get a toolkit yourself. You just oversee and yes. make sure that things are in place, yeah, that these things are happening. Absolutely, sense. and depending on the company, it depends how you, how you get involved. And I've been at companies where I have been fixing the trucks because I've been the only one to do it. 
up to companies with up to 100 vehicles and I've got a team of people underneath me to manage yeah. and it very much depends and a transport manager job title does not always mean they are the transport manager nominated on the license it often is a different person yeah. Um, so yeah drawing the distinction between traffic office and who is the actual named transport manager on the license and of course that's a matter of public record as well you can go and find out online on the government yeah. website who the transport manager is okay so that's, that's another interesting. interesting point yeah so I think a lot of people, particularly from my side, the driver's side, just think the transport manager is the person that plans their route. And if they give them a bad route, it's the transport manager's fault. Yes, but yeah. actually, you could be the transport manager, but you're not the planner. Quite right, So yeah. you might be overseeing the planner and making sure that they're planning the routes efficiently. But that's not necessarily your job, although it could be, it depending could be. on the company and Absolutely. the size. Yeah, it's, it's a very simplistic outlook for many drivers and, and people who don't see the inner workings of the role. When you yeah. come on the course, you start to understand what it truly involves, but yeah. The traffic office and traffic planners is almost a, a separate specialization. A, very, a good traffic planner is absolutely worth their weight in gold, but they're not necessarily a transport manager. Okay, so a lot of planners that are in big haulage businesses, for example, might not necessarily have this qualification. No, may not have any interest in the compliance side at all, but they're very, very good planners. And yeah, they, they're they good may, at that. You know, they can utilise the trucks to the maximum. That's interesting. Right. So I've enrolled on your course then, um, your Transport Manager CPC course, yes. hoping at the end of it to get my qualification that I could potentially manage someone else's haulage company. Um, what kind of people do you usually get on the course? So you say you've had, you know, a hundred people yeah, it's sit the exam. What kind of people do you get? What kind of do you get? Many women on the course. We there's there's less women. There's less women uh, on the last course. Out of I'm trying to think what we had in here. I think Brad's course he had four out of nine. So that's quite a high percentage of women yeah. compared to normal. I you had two and three threes out of the twelve. Yeah, I think you had twelve on yours. You had about three, so it's a much smaller proportion, you know. And one of the questions we get asked actually often by you know a woman thinking of coming on is, are there going to be any women on there? Because it's quite yeah. daunting, I suppose, because you kind of expect it to be a male-driven, male-driven organisation. But yeah, we do. But there are fewer women on there. But with regards to who we get on here, uh, I mean, we've had everything from. A young lad of 17 doing it for his dad because his dad doesn't speak the lingo, you know. Um, but they've changed the rules now, you've got to be 18, it's a minimum of 18 to get the qualification, but at the time you could do anybody from 16. We have everybody on the course, we do some of the biggest hauliers in the country, some of the biggest PSV operators in the country, who put regular people onto each quarter. We get, um, like I said earlier, you know, wives, partners, girlfriends, mothers, sons, that you know, that are doing it for family members. Um, often a lot of drivers, similar to you, you know, do either want to come off the road or want that as an option to come off the road. Yeah. Um, uh, the, 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 the options are, are limitless, really, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they really, really are yeah. limitless. It's like Tom mentioned earlier, you know, one of the guys that's going to be on your course is a, is a taxi driver, for example. You yeah. know, um, we've got several people at the minute who are operating vans in Europe. So that's a new change that's just come in, uh, which is terrifying for them because they have a two and a half ton van. Pet transporters. I think they've got two have just finished studying and one's just started. You know, they're taking your pet across to France if you're going on a long-term holiday, well, you would never need an operator license. Well, now they do, you know. Um, so for them, they're coming into this having run a van. This is completely different. It's completely off the wall. So it's a lot for them to learn. So operator licensing is not just coming in. Previously, it was above three and a half tonnes yes. that yep. you needed a CPC. Yep person yeah, to yes. run. Yeah. Now it's changing to vans so as well. So only if, only if you take that van into Europe. So if, oh, you, okay. if you run a van, let's say you're a courier and run you know, deliveries around Colville, then at the moment, no. But let's take the pet transporter, for example. If they you go on holiday and you want your cat with you, you pay them to take your cat and then you, you have it away on holiday. For them to go into Europe, they need to have now an international operator license. 
Um, the rules are, it, there's not a massive amount of information out there at the minute. Yeah, it's um, and it's something I'm working on for the website at the moment, so there will be a post going out with a bit, a bit more information on there. Um, but these guys have to have an operator license, which means they have to have a transport manager. Now, if they've been doing the job for 10 years up until August 2020, then they kind of can get it by default. Yes, as far as I've worked. Grandfather rights. Grandfather rights, in effect. But how many people, you know, it's like the guys that I'm speaking to at the minute, how many of them have been doing that for 10 years, which is in effect 12 years because it's up to August 2020. So we had something very similar back in about 2013 or 2014. They brought out a rule, and this was for the PSV side, they brought out a rule that anybody picking up um, passengers out of Geneva Airport in Switzerland had to have a management CPC. So we've got all of these guys that own ski chalets, for example, and went to pick up a party of four in the back of their Volkswagen Chirac. You know, they, they, they had, all of a sudden had to hold a management CPC. Uh, we had, I think it was about 35 or 40 guys come across. A lot of them did the distance learning course, but quite a few of them came and did the classroom course. You know, they're running cars, and yet we're teaching them about school routes and and, and timetabling buses and things like that. Yeah. So, like the, the the range is as broad as it as it can be of who we get in. You know, um, it's yeah, it's it's interesting to see who we get on occasion. Just while we've touched on that, you've got your transport manager CPC for haulage. Yep. And you've got your transport manager CPC for passenger passenger carrying vehicles, so for your buzzies and things like that. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear, that that's two separate courses. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. One doesn't give you the right to operate the other. So if you, you, once you pass this, you've got a transport manager CPC for road haulage, you would then have to come back, which a lot of people do actually, you'd then have to come back and do the PSV version. Okay. Now, 60% of the course is the same, probably probably more than that, to be honest. You know, because of the similar. rules are the rules are the rules. The driver's hours rules are for the most part the same. You know, the way you operate the vehicle for the most part the same, but it's a different qualification, you know. Um, so yeah, that's something people need to know. You, you can't then go and work for first bus, for example. Interestingly, that's the same with the licenses though. Yes. It's just because you've yeah. got your class yeah. two or category C license yeah. for trucks, you can't. Yeah drive a bus even though technically they're the same size almost yeah yeah you yeah. can't you have to do a separate test yeah. yeah yeah okay so you don't have to be an actual hgv driver no. or have your hgv or your psv licenses nope. to be a transport manager no nope. no nope. it's one of the first questions we get asked actually you know let, let go going back to earlier you know i want my son to sit this qualification he's not got his license you don't need to be a driver Obviously, when you're going out into the real world, massive benefit because you you know you can talk the talk and walk the walk at the same time. But you know the, the, there are no prerequisites to sit the course. Mm-hmm. Good aptitude with English and an aptitude for maths, as you're going to touch on the maths section. But you know the English, the maths is really important because it's written exams. You know, there's a lot of reading, there's a lot of writing and stuff like that. But you don't have to be. You know, you don't have to have three years in transport or hold a HGV or a PSV license. You know, it's it's your inbuilt aptitude that'll get through the course. Interestingly, you've said that. Mm-hmm. I looked up becoming a HGV instructor. Yep. And mm-hmm. you need to have held your license for three years, don't you? You do. For the category that you want to teach. But interestingly, there's no formal qualification for HGV instructor. But if you wanted to go and teach people in the car, you need a formal ADI qualification. Yeah. In the truck. So yeah, it's, it's a strange niche again. It's strange that technically I could run your haulage business mm. if you had one. Mm. If you won the lottery and you had one. <laughs> yeah. um, I could run your business Mm. having never driven a truck in my life mm. or driven a passenger carrying vehicle mm. i could mm. just go from school mm. 18 do yep. this course and run your business for yep. you yeah yep. but the, on the other the side you can't teach anyone to drive yeah. mm. a truck mm. unless you've held your license for mm. a number of years mm. but you don't actually have to prove you've got experience driving them mm. it's just from held your license that, isn't it? that particular question is always a point okay, of debate because mm. drivers will often say, 
I want a driver to be my transport manager, mm. but I know some brilliant transport managers who've never been drivers, and I know some terrible transport managers who have been drivers, and Absolutely. so mm. you, you can't get like a straight answer on what's, what's the right situation. Does it help? In some ways, yes, so you have advantage on driver's hours and things mm. like that, but in other ways, no, because maybe you've got some wrong information or you have biases and things yes. coming sometimes in fresh to it, yeah. sometimes can be a big advantage. So it's a really interesting debate topic, that. Mm. what makes a good transport manager because mm. that's the other thing it's not just the qualification this is just the beginning a bit like when you go and do your HGV driving license yeah. um, you then begin to learn and it's, it's a steep learning curve for this course and then afterwards yeah absolutely alright then so you've enrolled me on this course yep what is in store for me how is this course <laughs> going to work a few more grey hairs, <laughs> some yeah, pain, like okay. some tears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how we structure this? Now, you've enrolled on the online course, which is an evening class. Um, the reason we set it up as an evening class is so, like you, for example, you can fit it around your driving or your day job or you know whatever it may be. So, we offer several different options. So, we do two online courses. We do one which is a daytime course, which is on a Monday. Yeah. And then we do the evening course that Tom's running, which is usually on a Tuesday and a Thursday, depending on bank holidays and you know, various things like that. Um, so that you do seven weeks of training, so you'll be doing seven weeks of Tuesdays and a Thursday, um, seven, seven weeks of online training, and then you'll come to us, to, to, to either this centre or one of the satellites that we've got, you'll come and do two days of exam prep. So over the seven weeks, Tom has piled as much information into you as he can. We've done loads of practice, we've done loads of homework. You've submitted your homework, <laughs> which is key. Um, you've done lots of practice, lots of homework. So we've taught you, or Tom, sorry, Tom's taught you the, 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 Tom's taught you the folder, which thankfully you've got you there. So Tom's taught you the stuff in the folder. Those two days that you'll come to us, that's all about preparing you for the exam. So we're taking everything that's in your head, everything that you've learnt in there, we're putting it all together. Tom will be taking the course, so he'll be sitting with you, he'll be going through exam techniques, because as, uh, uh, again, as Tom will impress on you over these weeks, it's reading the questions, it's answering what the examiner wants, you know, and that's a skill to pick that out, you know. You can't just willy-nilly write lists of things. You yeah. know? There's ways to approach it. So those two days are really important, and then obviously you've got your final exam on the 10th of June. So they're the online courses. Um, some people still want to come into the classroom. You know, we we, we ran in March. We had three yeah. classes, uh, three classroom classes. Um, you know, and again, they, they, it's a different it's a different setup. I, personally, I think the online course is a great offering because you've got you've got more time to process what you're being taught. You know, with a classroom course. Um, traditionally, the exam date's on the 10th of June, and you would come in for the nine days before, yeah. exclude the weekends, you know. But you'd come in for those nine days, and you'd go bang, 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 exam prep, exam. Which... That's a lot. It's a, it, uh, even, even, and that's what a lot of people say, they get to it, and they're going, crikey, I need more time. Because you're learning an A-level, you know. How, you know, this is an A-level qualification, you know, that's... That folder, is, it's not a dozen sheets of paper that you've got to memorise, you know, there is a, it's a very broad subject, you know. The actual, the actual subjects themselves, I'm going to use, they're not relatively straightforward, that's unfair, but, you know, we can, we can teach you those, but there's so many of them, yeah. you know. For example, in there, there's 26 modules, and you could be asked questions from any of those, you know. Um, so, it, it, you having that extra week or those extra few days each session to do your homework to ask your questions to you know really process what you've been taught is really helpful you know um, some of the other classes we you know so you do your traditional one where you start run up to the exam and then we do two others that run you know beforehand again with those people they get to the end of it but they've got another week Mm -hmm. You know, to go away knowing what they're weak are at and knowing what they need to do to bring that up to, you know, so it gives them that chance. 
the more difficult ones, we also do a distance learning and a home study course as well. Distance learning is tutor supported home study. So they get the course material, they study it, they get access to the same portal that you use for, to do your homework. Uh, and they also get a tutor to back them up. That, that works very well, but you lose the structure of yeah. it's Tuesday night, I've got to sit down and do my course, or yeah. it's Monday daytime, I've got to lock in at nine o'clock. Yeah. Through my own personal experience doing distance learning courses, you've got to be very, very structured. You've got to be very, very disciplined. You can't, you know, you've got to do a day's work and then sit and think, right, financial management for two hours. Yeah. It's tough, you know, but for the right people, for, for those that are used to studying and have got quite a bit of experience to do, and that can work really, really well. Um, and then the other option is the home study. You know, we, 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 we can provide with just the course material. It's tough. It's tough to do it that way. It is really yeah. tough because you've got nobody to tell you what you're doing right and wrong. You know, you don't get access to the portals and so on and so on. You get tests. You get the test and you get the answers. So you can do the test, you can look at the answer, but without that fine tuning, without that guidance, it's very, very tough. So just to summarise then, yep. you offer classroom courses, yep. you offer two online courses, which mm -hmm. would be the daytime and the evening time. That's right. And you also offer a distance learning course, which is, you get your home study kit, but yep. you get tutor support as yep. well. And the revision sessions. And then you also offer just the home study kit, don't you? Yep. And I myself actually, in around, I think it was November last year, yeah. I bought myself this folder. Now, on the camera, I don't know if you can see how thick this folder is, but there's a lot of things in here to study. And I was convinced I can study it myself. Mm. I don't need anyone to help me. But when I opened it and saw how much there is, I mean, just to read out a few here, you've got driver's hours, driver's hours records, but inside driver's hours, you've actually got the drivers, the vehicles, the weekly driving limit, the daily driving limit, daily rest, weekly rest, multi-manning, working time regulations, <laughs> domestic regulations, there's a lot in there, it's not just driver's yeah. hours, like I know it yeah. as a driver. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've also got there's a lot in this course as well, which we haven't mentioned before, about financial management and vehicle costing. So the transport manager is someone that actually runs the business as well mm. and the finances, and that's quite heavy in here. Mm. Yes. For example, liquidity ratios. Um, what else have we got? Gross profit margin. <laughs> you've got. There's lots of terrifying words. Overdrafts, <laughs> loans. You've got yeah. capital. Mm. Assets, liabilities, what does it all mean? There's a lot in here. Um, vehicle running costs, profit requirements, taxation, income tax, self-employment, national insurance, pensions, VAT, company law. Like There is such a lot. I've turned all these pages and I'm still in the contents. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I haven't got to the actual course yet, all of these. And mm. that's the problem we know, is you can get very intimidated by that without the right guidance through it. Um, Weights and, the and correlations. Information technology, safe loading, carriage of food within the UK, carriage of livestock, dangerous goods. Like there is such a and lot here. And that's before you go international <laughs> as well. There yeah. is such a lot here. So. International transport, documents required. Like now, I've just got to the end of the contents, and I'm on page twenty-four. Mm. <laughs> well, so we, yeah, that's a very intentional. We've got a lot of detail in the contents, so you can cut to the information yeah. the end very quickly. Absolutely, but. that's a good thing. But mm. just in terms of that, I myself yeah. thought I can study this now, problem mm. in my own time, and I found it hard to get motivated. Mm. It's the truth. With I've the opened it and I've seen all of the writing in here, and I found it so hard to motivate myself mm. to do it. Mm. especially still mm. working full-time as a driver mm. I've yeah. got home and I don't want to look at this mm. so I've enrolled myself mm. on an online course with yourselves on an evening mm. so I can still continue my job mm -hmm. and I can still attend your online courses because 
I didn't mention this before, but I've actually travelled 50 miles to get here today. Mm, right, yeah. So I'm not local to you, otherwise I would have done your classroom one. Mm. But I'm not local to you, so mm. I think your online course is good because mm. it appeals to everyone yeah. across the UK. And yep. we, get, we get people from, you know, the yeah. wilds of Scotland and all sorts on well, online on, course. So. On your course, you've got, yeah, yeah, yeah from Stranra down to Kent. <laughs> I mean, there's just a lot in here. So I think being more, like you said, Mm. Um, the routine of sitting down for the course yeah. is definitely going to make me knuckle down better. Mm. Uh, I think I feel like I need that. Mm. I couldn't just do the home study kit on my own. There's there's just too much in there, and it's too technical for me. I think. And with somebody to break that down for you, it's not as daunting as it. You know, yeah. yeah. Those twenty six pages of contents, they're delivered in a way that you can understand. Absolutely. And delivered in a way that you can get to grips with. I'm tested, so you know, so you know that you're understanding it. And like you said, with the online course, um, the course actually starts for me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be the first evening class. Yeah. Yep. And don't lose your folder. I won't lose my folder. <laughs> no, uh, that will be the first evening class. But it's actually, it's actually April now, and the exam is in June. Yep. So mm. we're starting nice and early, and we've got mm. Tuesdays and Thursdays every week for our online courses. And in between, that gives you a lot of time to look over your notes and revise and contact yourself if we need help. Yeah, mm. As opposed to the 10 days intensive mm. classroom course, yeah. which is 10 consecutive days, mm. apart from your weekend and then your exam. Yeah. How I would learn all of that in 10 days, mm. I think would, that would be hard. It's, with the online course, okay. you get that week you get that time, to do the you? processing work. With the classroom course, you don't. It, <sighs> Again, it, 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 it's what suits people, mm -hmm. you know, it is what suits people, but particularly on that last course leading into the exam, the feedback is, I wish I had another week, I yeah. wish I had another month, can we make the course 27 days, you know, whatever it may be. Um, because people don't, re like you said there, people don't realise the breadth of it. They think, I'll buy a home study, read it a couple of times, I'll do a couple of online past papers. Yeah, that's exactly how I Piece thought. of cake, you know, yeah. piece of cake. The proportion of home studies that we sell versus the portion of those people that come and do their exam through doing that home study, it's, it doesn't correlate, no. you know. Um, you need the guidance. Yeah, people people need the guidance to be There's able to get through. such a flight here yeah. to, to learn on your own. So I'm glad that I've had this opportunity with mm. you to attend your online course. So how many sessions are there then on the online course? How many sessions are there? So we do together 14 sessions okay. over the seven weeks, so it's two a week. And between two and a half to three hours a session, depending on some modules are more intense than others. Um, and that's probably about your attention span for an evening after yeah. work for most people anyway. Um, and then I guess you set homework between each session and then at the start of the next session we go through it together and see how we got on. Okay. So is there much expected of me reading in my own time then? Because at university, when they give you the lectures, what they teach you in the lectures is not everything that you need to know for the exam. So yeah. is this the same kind of way? Am I expected to do a lot of studying in my own time? Yeah, yeah. There is a lot. There's way too much. We can possibly cover every word of the content in the sessions we have together. It's just the nature of it. So there's a lot of expectation on reading the notes, particularly after we go through it. Make sure you're clear on anything. We cannot cover every little detail, so we won't. We'll give you the broad strokes of the, of the module, and then um, expectation is do the homework, do study online, and, and do the case studies and practice. But overall, the qualification has 144 hours of guided learning, as they call it. So that's time with me, time spent studying, time spent on the portal. But together, we only probably get about 42, 44 hours on these online sessions. So okay. that shows you you've got a lot of work on your own time to do, mm -hmm. yeah. even even despite the sessions. Does that include the two days, the classroom days as well? Oh, add, it, add the two days mm. in the classroom, that'll be another yeah. Yeah. About 14 60, hours. So hours, yeah, about yeah. 60 hours sort of the intense trainer contact, I suppose, and then the rest of the yeah. time. So 60 out of 144 yes. with yourselves, and I the mean, rest is down to me. Yeah, That's yeah. daunting. <laughs> and so people don't necessarily pick up on that going into the course. Yeah. You definitely don't want to underestimate what's involved. Not to scare people, but just to say you have to commit to this. You have to decide, I want to do it, I want to pass. What's, tell me how to do it, and I'll, I'll do yeah. it. But yeah, if you go into it sort of 
half and half it's not it's not, not the right approach no. so you've got to you've got to use what you sounds tough but you've got to use what you pay for yeah you know when you when you're coming onto this course whether it be the to support you know, whatever it may be that you've you, you paid for use it you know question ask questions submit your work you know yeah. the more you commit to it as, as Tom said there the more support we can give you the better your chance of passing it yeah. you know So just talking about there about passing, one thing when you Google transport manager CPC that comes up a lot is, is it hard? And <laughs> yes. how hard is it? Yes. So, I mean, is it easy to pass this course? Simple answer there is, is no, it's not. If you were to look up nationwide pass rates across all exam boards, so not just our own, and not just our own company, less than one in three people who attend this pass it first time. So wow. there's your figure to work from. And of course, statistics, you can give all manner of statistics, but it's not an easy exam by any stretch. Mm. And the pass marks that you have to achieve, only 50% in the case study, so it doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, you get some people who, who get barely any marks just because they've not studied, not been guided and gone barking up the wrong tree. So just to interrupt you there, there's two exams, isn't there? Yes, yeah. So there's a multiple choice exam yeah which the pass rate is around it's 70 percent so you've 70%. got only get 18 questions wrong out of 60. that's a lot of questions to get correct it's quite yeah it's it's, it's probably the it's tougher like the of the two course. exam yeah exactly that and yeah. they're not easy multiple choice so if you don't know the answer you don't know the answer and they will take oh, yeah. you know cheap shots if to try and catch you out that's the whole what they're trying to achieve mm -hmm. um, case study is a bit easier because you've got the material with you but you have to apply it in the right way and what people find on that exam is they run out of time yeah. mm -hmm. rather than not knowing what to do. So you have to manage your time really carefully on the case study. So you have multiple choice and case studies. Yes. Do you do them on the same day? You do. It's quite an intense day to be honest. You, you come in, you sit one exam, you have an hour of break and then you sit the, the next exam. Wow. And they're two hours each or the second exam is two hours, 15 minutes. Do you have to do it like that? Um, if you've yeah. already passed one or the other module and you're going back for a reset, you would only reset the one you need to reset. Okay. But you have to, if you're attempting it, you have to do them both on the same day. And the best way is to do them both and pass them both yeah. and then and not have to draw a line it. under it. Mm. No pressure. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I like it. So you've mentioned that you set homework for our students. I do. I'm sorry, but there's there's no so way you're around. So you're one of those teachers. I am one of those <laughs> teachers, and I, I do enjoy setting the homework. And, and the idea is, whatever we cover in in the module on the evening, by doing the homework, you're actually testing your own knowledge. Has it yeah. gone in? Do you understand? And hopefully, make a mistake. Make all the mistakes. And the idea is, you make all the mistakes before you get to the exam. Absolutely. Um, so. And we go way beyond. We like to think the level of the exam. So by the time you go into the exam. It's that train hard and, and fight easy thing, yeah. So, will I be told off if I don't submit my homework? Um, in a very nice way. You <laughs> might be guided to do the homework as best as you can. I know life gets in the way. We have to be realistic about these things. But mm. to get the most out of the course, you need to do the homework. It's yeah. strange for me to be on the receiving end of homework, being an ex-teacher. Mm. Yes, well, um, I look forward to your scrutiny in the, in the opposite direction. Don't get your red pen and, and mark <laughs> Don't be too harsh on me. <laughs> How often does the content of the course change? Is this something that changes quite often? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. That was a fast answer. <laughs> because it's a constant, okay. it's a constant battle to keep that up to, up to date. Um, it, it's. Every, every month it's looked at, every three months it gets a full pass to okay. make, sure it's, make sure everything's up to date. But it's, it's constantly changing, especially since Brexit, because things chop and things change. You know, take the, take the new van rule, for example, you know, that's yeah. how it had to be added in. Um, it, it, it's, it's constantly updated, you know, and it is, it's essential because if you're, you often see on eBay, Home studies available. Well, don't worry, it's the 2019 edition. Yes, yes. Yeah. that's already. Well, that's 2019. Sense. You know, yeah. um, I mean, we, we we tend to say, if you take the distance learning for example, you know, 
that course material will do you for six months or two exam periods. You know, it's, it, that, that's good. And we'll keep it, if there's major things, we'll keep it up to date. Same with you guys, you know, you've got, there's a, an addendum in there because yours was produced before we added the van um, elements in there. So you've got an addendum in your secondary folder, which you, you might not have gone too deeply into that one yet, but you've got an addendum in there, you know, and our job to give you the best chance of passing You've got to have the stuff that's right. You've got to have it up to date, and it's got to be covering everything. So as it stands at the moment, once you get your Transport Manager CPC, it's not something that you have to renew, like your... You don't... Um, you other things are only valid for five years yeah, and things. Yeah, so mm. it's, they say it's a lifetime qualification, which is true. Once you pass the exam, it's yours for life. But something I always say to potential transport managers and after you pass, it's very difficult to gain and it's very easy to lose. Yeah. Because unlike many industries, that can be taken off you for not doing your job properly. So you get essentially a license to practice. And if you are shown to be not of professional competence because you've proved you don't know what you're doing and you've got into regulatory problems maybe with the traffic commissioner, the very worst case we're talking about, but they can take it off. So you. you can actually get this qualification and then they take it away. And they from might you. stipulate that you're banned from practicing for a period of time or wow. maybe reset the exam altogether. Mm. Wow. So you really have to decide if it's what you want to do because that reputation will follow you through your whole career. Although it's a lifetime qualification, it is recommended mm. that every five years you do a refresher. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, because if you think, you know, go back to what we were saying with those, those you know, how quickly they change, you know, you've got to be, you're putting your qualification on the line, you're putting your repute on the line, you've got to be working to the most current rules, yeah. you know. Um, there's driver licensing changes, there, were, there was driver's hours changes last year, you know, and if you're well, there working was test to... as well. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Testing, didn't they? Yeah, exactly. So, changes, so, you know, it, it, it's, for you as a transport manager, it's your job to stay ahead of that or to yeah. stay up to date with that, you know. And a two day refresher every five years at a minimum, you know, at a minimum. Yeah. Because it it, it, it it shows you that what you're either what you're doing is right or where you need to make adjustments. Do MDR offer that refresher? Sure do. Yep. You do, that yeah, is something. Do. Yes. Okay, so once you have the C P C in a couple of years' time when things have changed. Yep. Uh, you're able to come back and yep. do a refresher with yourself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay. a very different pace. There's not a formal examination with a refresher, but mm. it's just to get you as much information in those two days about what's changed and what you should be doing. And, mm. and because things do change, it's always industry led. If there's a lot of problems the traffic commissions are having with a particular area, they'll change the regulation or change the guidance, and then you have to react to that. So. Mm. So you've just mentioned their traffic commissioner. Who is the traffic commissioner? What's all that about? Right, so, yeah, it's a horrible, big, scary word, traffic commissioner. Yeah, who, is this, <laughs> who is this person or who I are these people? I imagine them to be in high vis with flashing eyes. <laughs> well, it goes, it goes beyond that. So they are the regulators of, of the road haulage industry and, and the passenger transport industry as well. So they are right at the top. They're the ones who will grant your operator's licence and they're the ones who will take any regulatory action against you. So every traffic area in the country has a traffic commissioner guiding it and you hopefully never d really deal with them apart from your application but if you do get in trouble or find things you've not been doing properly they will look at your operation, might call you in to speak to you, we call that a public inquiry um, and they might decide no you're not the right person to be a transport manager and will take okay. your qualification away. So you have to know who they are and be aware of their powers and do know what they expect and so you can do the right thing. Um, but it's a, they are a good, they are a force for good in the industry because a lot of people are running around out there not doing what they should be doing. And ultimately we're talking about road safety and so that's mm -hmm. really important. That's their main goal is the road safety. So, so in a sense then, if Rich won the lottery and he had... I won the lottery three times. So. I know, yeah, <laughs> you do quite well. I'm not going to share some. Um, you've won the lottery again. You've got all of your lorries ready to go. Mm -hmm. You've got a person with a transport manager CPC ready to uh -huh. work with you. Uh -huh. So you apply for your operator license to the transport commissioner, mm -hmm. transport commissioner right. and they decide whether they're going to give you that license or yes. not. Yeah. yeah, and very much on an individual basis. They will look at you as an individual and they'll look at your transport manager as an individual. Okay. Have I seen them before? Do I know who they are? They've been in trouble before? Any criminal records, all of this stuff that okay. we go into. So it's really quite an intense process, not to be taken lightly. 
So just because you've got all the lorries and you've got a person... Lottery wins don't get me a no licence. Yeah, then you're not necessarily <laughs> going to get your operator licence. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing you have to... But if you, follow the, if you follow the procedures that they set out, they yeah. set out, you know, there's an application procedure, you know, again, it takes research, you know, you... <laughs> It's very difficult, you know, and I think a lot of people fall into the trap thinking, right, I'm going to buy a lorry. I was just going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to buy a lorry. Yeah. I'm going to, and, and, and there's an Amazon around the corner. I'm going to, I'm going to pull, pull wagons for them. You know, it's a lot more in depth than that. You know, you need to stop, take, do the research, do your own research, look at what's involved in it, follow the steps, get advice. Yeah. Because it, it, you know, if you make it, if you drop a clanger on that application process. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you're back to square one or you're back beyond square one you know it, 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 it's not a simple process just to touch on what you've said so technically you could run a fleet of vans a courier business and because it's less than three and a half tons mm -hmm. you don't need an operator license but there's a misconception I think that people mm. think they can buy their own tractor unit and trailer mm. and then run their own business but as soon as you go above Yes. Three and a half tons. Mm. You yeah. need mm. you need oh, an operator yeah. license. You need a person with the transport manager's EPC. Mm. Mm. Unless um, you're doing your own, so there are there's, there's, there's exceptions, there's exemptions, yeah. but right. yeah, for the most part, yeah. 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 Oh, that's interesting. Looks like I won't be buying my own lorry then. <laughs> well, once you've got this, you can do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll license. give you some of my lottery win. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll need the lottery win. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's something that you touch on in the course, though, how yes. to apply for your in, 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 in great so. depth, we go into all yeah. the licensing mm. and all the, all the costs. Just quickly then, what else do you offer at MDR? So you offer the Transport Manager CPC course. Yes, yeah. Transport yeah. Manager CPC, sorry. You offer the Refresher course. Mm -hmm. What else do you offer? Okay, uh, transport management and refreshers, that's the main part of the business. Um, another course that we do we do is the operator license awareness course. So that is for uh, those on restricted licenses or company directors who, again, the traffic commissioner expects them to have an awareness of the operator licensing procedure. Restricted operators don't have to have a transport manager, but they still need to operate their fleets mm -hmm as uh, you know a, a, a large hortlier would yeah so we do the ola it's called the ola the operator license awareness training that's a one day course and it's a it's an awareness course okay. to give you a broad strokes understanding of how it work, of how the o license how your you of your responsibilities to that operator license um, first aid driver cpc uh, there are two other courses that we do so they're, they're the main ones. That so you do. do driver CPC courses. We do driver CPC. And yep. you've got some more in the works. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So absolutely. you've got more courses in the works. Yes. Okay. Then. I think you've covered everything pretty well then. I know that from what I can get in summary is it's going to be a difficult course. There's a lot of studying I need to do in my own time. I'm going to get told off politely if I don't do my homework. <laughs> uh, Beginning politely. <laughs> there's a lot to learn, definitely. Yeah, uh, there is a lot to take in, but we will get you through it. You know, if you give us your commitment, then mm -hmm. you'll get. You walk out of that exam and you go, done that. That's mm -hmm. the end of that. Like that. And that's yeah. the feeling I want you to have on exam yeah. day, because you, know, you have to wait for the results. So it's best to just know, yeah, done it. Okay. Yeah. All right, then I think we've basically covered everything mm -hmm. um, about the course and what a transport manager is and who needs this qualification and what's in store for me. So if we leave it there, I can't wait to start the course. And uh, I'm not going to say that when I actually do start. I've got a lot <laughs> yeah. of homework. But I can't wait to start and, um, and, and get this qualification under my belt, all being well. So yeah. I thank you, of course. Uh, for giving me the opportunity to do this qualification for free in return for a review on YouTube and I am going to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we need that. Yeah. We do need and, um, yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much. No problem. Good to have you on board. Can't wait for the course. Yes, yeah. look forward to teaching you. Excellent.